Mr. Vance, Congressman Ryan has called you Donald Trump's ass kisser. The implication being you will pay any price for the endorsement and support of the former president who publicly insulted you in Youngstown. That was the start to a real question asked by one of the moderators at the last debate between Tim Ryan and J.D. Vance, which kind of goes to show you that the ass kisser moment from the last debate was the most memorable moment from the debate if people are still talking about it, which is absolutely humiliating for J.D. Vance. Now, we're going to watch the moderator finish the question, and J.D. Vance is going to try to flip this around on Tim Ryan and make it seem as if he's the ass kisser. But ultimately, I don't think it's going to go well. But first, let's see how he responds. To prove the congressman wrong and to show Ohio voters that you are your own man, I would like you to identify one issue that Mr. Trump is wrong about and therefore deserving of public criticism. Well, look, I disagree with the president on a number of things. He's a friend of mine, of course, and I'm proud to have his endorsement. But look, the thing that, 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 that was wrong about the Trump administration is they put a lot of people in the administration, a lot of bad personnel folks who actually advocated limitless, nonstop wars that would mean a lot of folks from Mahoning Valley and a lot of folks from where I grew up would have to go off and fight those wars. A guy like John Bolton, for example, should have never been national security advisor in the Trump administration. But let me address Tim Ryan's point and, and, and your question there. Donald Trump told a joke. He told a joke at a rally based on a false New York Times story, and Tim Ryan has decided to run his entire campaign on it. Now look, Tim Ryan is publicly out there on national television saying, I love Nancy Pelosi. Uh, a few, what was it, a few months ago, he went before a national audience and said that he has to suck up and kiss up to Chuck Schumer. The guy who's subservient to the national party is Tim Ryan, who's been begging for these guys to come into this race and save him from the campaign that he's been running. So look, <laughs> it's ridiculous for him to accuse me of being anything because he has utterly failed to be independent to represent this valley, and he'll be utterly he will, he will utterly fail to represent the people of Ohio if he's elected to the United States Senate. So just so I get this straight, <clears throat> when the former president said. J.D. is kissing my ass because he wants my support. You took that as a joke? I, I, I know the president very well, and absolutely, he was joking about a New York Times story. That's all he was doing. I didn't take offense to it. I talked to the president before it. I talked to the president afterwards. Everybody there took it as a joke. This guy goes on national TV and says, I love Nancy Pelosi, and has the audacity of accusing me of kissing anyone's rear end. It's pretty rich. I love how the moderator repeated the ass kisser comment. It's just... L after L for J.D. Vance. Now, his answer about what he disagrees with Trump on kind of proves Tim Ryan's point because he said John Bolton, warmongers, those types of individuals should not have been within Trump's administration. But that's such a safe answer. If you're going to you know, answer the question, actually be bold and say, I disagree with Trump on policy X or Y. But what you're doing is you are criticizing Trump for putting people in his administration that he's already attacked, who are currently attacking Donald Trump. So it kind of proves that you have no political courage whatsoever. But because he can't prove that he has political courage, because he doesn't, he tried to make it seem as if Tim Ryan is similarly weak when it comes to Democratic Party leadership. He claimed that he loves Nancy Pelosi, and he also said that he has to suck up to Chuck Schumer. To be fair, I'll play you the clip of Tim Ryan saying just that. Let me tell you. Two real quick stories, because Senator Schumer's here, and I want to make sure he's my future boss, so I got to suck up a little bit here. <laughs> Embarrassing, yes, but not the same thing as what J.D. Vance did with Donald Trump. If, for example, Tim Ryan previously hated Chuck Schumer and then pretended to like Chuck Schumer just to get ahead and then have Chuck Schumer insult him only for Tim Ryan to continue to kiss Chuck Schumer's ass, then that would be comparable to the J.D. Vance Trump situation. But that's not actually the case with Tim Ryan and Chuck Schumer. It's just not similar. And to his credit, he has taken on Democratic Party leadership in a profound way. I am not the biggest Tim Ryan fan. In fact, I supported his opponent, Morgan Harper, in the primaries. But Tim Ryan ran against Nancy Pelosi to be the speaker. 
So that's perhaps the biggest way that you can challenge leadership. So for all the critiques that I have of Tim Ryan, saying that he kowtows to leadership is not one that I would lob at him. Now, we're going to see how Tim Ryan answers the same question because the moderator, of course, had to both sides of the question to appear fair to J.D. Vance. And usually lightning doesn't strike twice, but Tim Ryan is going to trot out the same ass kisser argument, but somehow he's going to make it even more effective than last time, and he's going to recapture the magic of that last debate. Take a look. I would like you to point to an issue that Speaker Pelosi has totally bungled and therefore deserves public repudiation. Well, let me, let me just uh, first say that this is obviously a clip that J.D. is running to try to misrepresent people. I ran against Nancy Pelosi, J.D., for leadership. And you have to have the courage to take on your own leaders. These leaders in D.C., will, they, will, they will eat you up like a chew toy, right? I mean, you were calling Trump America's Hitler. Then you kissed his ass. That's not true. It is true. And then you kissed his ass, and then he endorsed you. And you said he's the greatest president of all time. Mitch McConnell gave you $40 million to prop up your campaign. Peter Thiel gave you $15 million. That's $55 million, J.D. What do you think they want for that? They want your loyalty. And you proved that you'll kiss their ass, too. And look, it's nothing personal. I'm just telling you, like, I've been in this business. It's tough business. If you think you're going to help Ohio, you're not. If you can't even stand up for yourself... How are you going to stand up for the people of the state? How are you going to take on the corporate interests? All the money you took are from the corporations who sent all our jobs overseas. Peter Thiel, 15 million bucks, buddy. What, what do you think he wants? That was absolutely devastating for J.D. Vance. Now, first, I'll bring up how Tim Bryan noted that he's not an ass kisser like J.D. Vance because he ran against Nancy Pelosi in the House. That's kind of a devastating point, is it not? So you can't just flip it and do a no you as a rebuttal because Tim Ryan has demonstrated that he does have the courage to stand up to Democratic Party leadership. I may disagree with him on a lot of things, but saying that he lacks political courage is not an attack that I would lob at Tim Ryan. So it's just inaccurate to say that, and it's not a very good defense of yourself. Oh, well, yeah, I'm a coward, but so are you. Doesn't really work in this instance when you're running against someone who actually challenged Democratic Party leadership. As much as I disagree with Tim Ryan, I wish that left members of Congress would challenge leadership in the way that Tim Ryan did, right? So moving on, Tim Ryan, I, I think, sharpened the knife a little bit. He brought up how J.D. Vance once called Trump an ass kisser, or excuse me, once called Trump America's Hitler, and then began to kiss his ass. That's such a brutal point, and it shows what a fraud J.D. Vance is. And I actually transcribed this next paragraph because it's so devastating, and I wish that more Democrats would make the same point that Tim Ryan is making here. He said, if you can't even stand up for yourself, how are you going to stand up for the people in this state? How are you going to take on corporate interests? All the money you took are from the corporations who sent all our jobs overseas. Peter Thiel, 15 million bucks. What do you think he wants? That right there is one of the most powerful attacks that you can lob at a Republican because it's populist, you're pointing out money in politics and the way that that corrupts politicians. And that is going to land with every single person who's watching. It's devastating. And if every single Democrat did this, said what Tim Ryan is saying, I think they would be much more successful. Because Democrats, we've been talking about this lately, they've been kind of running away from the economic argument this election cycle overall and been focusing more on abortion, which I think isn't a bad strategy per se. But Republicans are kind of weaseling out of their extremism on abortion because they're sidestepping that and they're trying to appeal to people when it comes to the economy. Tim Ryan isn't taking up this right-wing line when it, com when it comes to the economy. He's actually saying, you did this. You are taking money from corporations who shipped American jobs overseas, and now you're taking money from billionaires. What do you think they're going to want from you in return? Loyalty. They're going to call in favors. This is a devastating attack. And Tim Ryan here, he is doing what every Democrat should be doing. He's setting a new blueprint for Democrats, and I hope that they follow it. Now, moving on, the next clip is going to feature Tim Ryan 
criticizing J.D. Vance for bringing up the Great Replacement Theory. And as you're going to see, J.D. Vance is going to come up with a different version of the how can I be racist, I have black friends argument. And I'll tell you what he actually said when we come back, because he's going to claim that, no, he's not pushing this conspiracy theory about Great Replacement. We'll see that that's a lie, but let's watch first. We have a... So the, we have a... Hold on, J.D. Stop no, this is me. This is disgusting. I'd like to here, get here's more. exactly what happens when the media and people like Tim Ryan accuse me of engaging the Great, great Replacement Theory. I'll tell you, you were exactly, peddling it. I'll you tell you exactly what that. happens, Tim. What happens is that my own children, my biracial children, get attacked by scumbags online and in person because you are so desperate for political power that you'll accuse me, the father of three beautiful biracial babies, of engaging in racism. We are sick of it. You can believe in a border without being a racist. You can believe in the, the country without being a racist. And this just shows how desperate this guy is for political power. I know you've been in office for 20 years, Tim, and I know it's a sweet gig, but you're so desperate not to have a real job that you'll slander me and slander my family. It's disgraceful. Thank you, Mr. Vance. I think, hold on, Derek. Real quick, I think I've got to get one more question in. I think I struck a nerve with this guy. You absolutely he's struck a nerve. It's shame. He's normal obviously, people, Tim Ryan, JD, when you insult their families, you strike a nerve I didn't, with I didn't normal, talk normal people. About you. I would never talk about your family, JD. I wasn't raised that way. I would never talk about your family. So right. don't try to spin this because you don't want to talk about the fact that you're with the extremists in that belief, which is grounded, going back decades, led to some crazy dude getting a gun and going to a black and grocery store. It's disgusting store. and I've never it's, endorsed it's, it. Jay, it's disgusting. You talk about it's it and you're running an around, you're running around with Marjorie Tim, Taylor Greene. To believe in a border, okay. Tim Ryan thinks that you endorse the great no, replacement so theory. Not, it's he, unbelievable. This, this, right, this is what you do. You join Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer calling your own people racist for daring to believe in a I'm border in their calling. own country. This is the game that he plays. So because he has biracial children, he can't be racist, apparently. First of all, that's not a real defense. Second of all, how is this not the weaponization of identity politics? I thought that Republicans hated identity politics. That's what he's doing. Now, he's deflecting, and he's not saying what he actually said, but let's get to what J.D. Van said and why Tim Ryan is accusing him of spreading the Great Replacement of Conspiracy Theory. This is courtesy of PBS. Republican Senate nominee J.D. Vance accused Democrats of trying to transform the electorate. Warning of an immigrant invasion, Vance told Fox News Channel that Democrats have decided that they can't win re-election in 2022 unless they bring a large number of new voters to replace the voters that are already here. So using the word replace is a direct reference to the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory. And he's doing this on Fox News where hosts like Tucker Carlson have pushed the same replacement theory hundreds of times, literally. And if that didn't make it clear enough who he was appealing to, he also released this ad. Are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? The media calls us racist for wanting to build Trump's wall. They censor us, but it doesn't change the truth. Joe Biden's open border is killing Ohioans, with more illegal drugs and more Democrat voters pouring into this country. This issue is personal. I nearly lost my mother to the poison coming across our border. No child should grow up an orphan. I'm J.D. Vance, and I approve this message because whatever they call us, we will put America first. He knows what he's doing here. He knows exactly what he's doing and who he's trying to appeal to, who he's trying to dog whistle to. So do you honestly believe that when he talked about the ways that Democrats are trying to replace existing voters, he really wasn't referencing the Great Replacement conspiracy theory? Of course he was. And think about how stupid that ad is. So in that ad, he talks about how Joe Biden's open border is killing Ohioans. First of all, when it comes to immigration in Ohio, I mean, shouldn't you be more concerned with Canadians than Mexican immigrants? Because you're on the other side of the country. You're nowhere near Mexico. And if you actually are worried about the drugs coming over the border, then wouldn't you propose a policy to actually stop that? decriminalize or legalize drugs so that way the government can actually control the flow of drugs, regulate it. 
I mean, these are things that Republicans don't think about because they're not actually very policy minded. They just want to demonize people. If, if they could fear monger about immigrants by claiming that they're coming over illegally through our open border and bringing drugs that are killing Americans, then that's what they're going to say because that's going to help them get elected. But I think that what Tim Ryan showed, again, is that J.D. Vance is in over his head and the only way he's going to be able to win is by galvanizing enough racists who he has directly been appealing to but either way still not a great look and I'm, I'm glad that tim ryan is able to embarrass jd van so thoroughly and, and that it's stuck because again if you have a moderator who's repeating the ass kisser line that's gonna leave a mark so we'll see what happens overall but, you know, I hope that these debates leave a lasting impact on J.D. Vance. I'm not necessarily sure that that will indeed be the case, because as we've seen in cases like Florida, for example, when Andrew Gillum was debating Ron DeSantis, I think that he was really persuasive in those debates. But ultimately, he lost and Ron DeSantis went on to become one of the most popular right wing governors, if not the most popular right wing governor in America. So just because you see a good debate performance doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be conducive to success, because, again, voters nowadays are very team sport oriented. Right. So even if Tim Ryan is demonstrably crushing J.D. Vance in these debates, that's not really going to move people who already made up their minds that they're going to support their teams no matter what. So it's a matter of how many independents can Tim Ryan win over. And I think that by bringing up the corruption of J.D. Vance and how he takes money from these corporations and billionaires, that is really persuasive and he needs to keep it up if he wants to beat J.D. Vance, in my opinion. Were you acting like a...